hand and you'll miss the blessing. And I thank you that our hearts are open and our minds are clear to understand some things tonight. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Just to give you a little rundown uh, of what we have on the board here. And I want you to see that we have two line, two um, periods of time here of, 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 uh, of time, of line. Then have you noticed the bottom one is longer? If you, everybody see that? See, it's longer, see. Because, see, <clears throat> in the Old Testament, that's, that's what they saw. And uh, they didn't see... They didn't see a lot of this other that uh, we're seeing that we know today. So that's what you see there. So the Old Testament timeline is what the prophets saw. Okay. But then later on, as God revealed uh, the church, because the church was a mystery back then, the church came into being. And uh, so we see that it's a longer timeline. So you have eternity way back now, I'm starting with Abraham, uh, Adam there, Abraham, I mean Adam, uh, eternity uh, to eternity. Think of this board as eternity. In, and in between the eternity, there's this little timeline that we call time, okay? And that's where we're at. So when you look at this board, we all know that we're right here, right? Wrong. <laughs> no. Adam, that's the garden, Adam and Eve. Now, let me say that a lot of people blame God for everything, okay? God gave man a will, and a lot of things that's come upon this earth uh, was destructive, and it wasn't God's will. But because man has a will, he chooses to do his thing, then there's a result to everything we, we choose, if we, a consequence. So someone said, well, I don't want to serve God. You don't have to. <laughs> but it's a consequence. See, if you don't. So, so once you recognize that decisions that we make affect our tomorrow, affects our, the next generation, so making the right decisions today is so important to give us a good future in, in the future. So here we have Adam, and we, then we had the flood. And we know what happened all through that period of time, and that's past tense, you see. Same thing down here. We see the same thing in the timeline here. Then we get to Abraham. From Adam to Abraham is 2,000 years, okay? 2,000 years. There's Abraham. All right, and uh, we see the same thing down here on this timeline. Abraham, from Adam to Abraham, you got 2,000 years. Well, that's just a, a drop in the bucket to God, but we look at, we look at 2,000 years and we say, boy, that's a long time, isn't it? But to God, it's one day. So we, we know all of that. So anyway, we move on and we see Abraham and we come to David, <clears throat> and there's 3,000 years from Adam to King David. <clears throat> And we know that God was raising up a nation now from, from uh, Abraham that uh, God was going to allow his son to be born. Uh, and uh, we know that. Then we go all the way to the cross. And I'm making this clear uh, quick because I want to get into the scriptures and, and share some scriptures with you. So from Adam to the cross, we have <coughs> 4,000 years. To Adam, to Abraham, 2,000, David, 3,000 to the cross. Now, when you read the scriptures in the Old Testament, it talks about uh, a virgin that's going to have a baby, Mary. We know that's Mary. That's Jesus' mother. And now we, when we read this, we have, to, we have to, I ask questions when I read the Bible. Has that already passed? Has Jesus been born yet? I want to get some response to you. Raise your hand if you think he's been, okay. See, so we know that, okay. And in the Old Testament, it talked about, in Isaiah, it talked about uh, that uh, he was going to be born also in uh, the exact spot where he was going to be born. Anybody know where he was born? Bethlehem. Bethlehem. We got a man here that's read the Bible. Bethlehem. Did that, did that come to pass? See, so we, we take these things, and I'm just going over this very lightly 
But, <clears throat> but as you read these prophecies that, that have been fulfilled, your faith will be strengthened because then you have to ask yourself a question. If all of these prophecies have been fulfilled, uh, where we're at today, here at the, which I'm going to point out here to the church age, from, from, the, the, from the cross all the way to the rapture, which is the church age. So when you read the scriptures, you have to divide and understand that there's a difference in the last days of the church and the last days that the, uh, that the uh, talking about the tribulation last days, okay? So Paul, <coughs> excuse me, <clears throat> Paul brings out the, uh, the church age and what's going to happen during the church age and why the church is here. Uh, we see the purposes of God to redeem man f uh, because Adam, by, by the one man Adam, sin came into the world and then Jesus was born and he took upon him himself sin and death and the wrath of God all fell upon Christ. <clears throat> and then those that accept Christ are free. We're free. See? And that's the beautiful picture of God's grace and love. So we go ahead and we, we, we see this up here and all. And then we come to, they have, of course, the seven years tribulation. They have that. And this is, by the way, is about the Jews. <coughs> Excuse me. But down here, the church age uh, is about the Jews and the Gentiles, which is us. Okay? Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved, Jew or Greek. So salvation is waiting for every individual. You don't have to uh, go to the, uh, to the altar and beg God to save you. How many of uh, you know he's already paid the price? I understand where I'm coming from now. Uh, he already died on the cross, and he's already provided salvation for everybody. So what is our part in this? Receive it. Believe it and receive. As many as receive Christ, God gives them the power and authority to become sons of God. So you don't have to go to the altar and beg for salvation. Oh, Lord, save me. I've already saved you at the cross. Just accept it. You see? Does everybody understand that? How many has ever been to the altar begging God to save them? <laughs> yeah, be honest. <laughs> just in, Hey, just in case. Just in case it didn't t take last week, I want to go back again. But see, now we've gained knowledge and realized that salvation is waiting for everybody. That's all you have to call upon the name of the Lord and receive, receive, receive his salvation now, see. So we, we see these timelines. And of course, how many know that the Jews are still waiting for the Lord to come? Uh, which is the second coming of Christ. But see, uh, in this area here, they didn't know about the church age. So when you get into the New Testament and you understand that Paul received from the resurrected Lord about the church age, it talks about that we're a body of Christ. We are the church. We are the temple of God. The apostle Paul got all that revelation from the risen Lord and was able to write it down into the Bible. But see, they didn't have that knowledge up here in the Old Testament. Okay? Now, they were the people of God. In fact, in the Old Testament, I mean, uh, the Gentile was nothing. There's no hope for the Gentile. But see, God comes along and begins to teach and preach. Now, when Jesus was on, on the earth, how many of you know he came to save Israel? He... Per, he fulfilled all the prophecies in those three years, in a, three years, we'll say. He fulfilled all the prophecies that the Old Testament prophets said he would fulfill. As a, pro, as a prophet, he was a prophet, he was the Lord, <clears throat> he was the Son of God, he was the Savior of the world, but he fulfilled all of those prophecies that the Old Testament prophets told uh, and wrote down that he would fulfill, see. And we have to see that, that he actually came. He said he had, didn't come for the Gentiles at that point. He came for the Jews. And they were to have the responsibility to preach the gospel to the whole world. And they did for the first 15 years, and then things began to break up. The temple was torn down 
and they were scattered all over the world because of their disobedience. And then, of course, God raised up the Apostle Paul, who became the apostles to the Gentiles and brought us the knowledge of that we're, we are the body of Christ on the earth. Each one of us is a member of the one body. And now, of course, we know over the years, man has broken down into Baptists and Methodists and, and whatever. You say, well, what about the shield of faith? Well, you've got to have a name for, for tax purposes, so that's why we put the shield of faith. That's biblical. Shield of faith is biblical. So we got that name, had to file for our tax things and all, did all that because you have to have a name. But there's only one body on the earth. One body. It ain't Baptists, it ain't Methodists, whatever you want to call them. That, you know, that, you know, how many of you understand what I'm saying? See, that we, see, we have to understand that and, and don't uh, be, be, uh, think. Uh, sometimes when I'm witnessing or I'm talking to some of my brothers in the Lord going, that go to other denominations and all, I don't tell them, we're, you know, I, 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 if they're Baptists, I, I, I'm a Baptist. If they're Methodists, I'm a Methodist. I become all things that I might win a few to Christ. See, I mean, you know that that would that right away they put the curtain up, down, shut you right out. Shield of faith. What kind of religion is that? You know, they don't understand that we're born again. We're the children of God. God did it. He birthed us into His kingdom. We gave our life to Him. So, all the people around the world, regardless of what they call them. If they've been born again, they're members of the one body of Christ. Now, God's wisdom, he couldn't put everybody in one building, so he had local churches raised up in all the different geographical locations and gave them shepherds and leaders and, 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 and would teach the Bible. So that's, that's the way that we have to see it. Now, what I want you to see here is, and I know it's hard for you to see there, but what is the next thing that we're, we're looking for? See? Well, Israel's looking for the second. We're looking for the rapture, okay? The catching up of the saints. And when you read that in the Bible, the terminology is totally, you can't, you, you can't scramble it up. It is so simple, you see. The second coming, they'll see him. They'll see him. The Jews will. The Jews will see him whom they have pierced, and they'll repent, see. But we won't see him. We're just caught up to be with him in the Lord, then we'll see him once we're caught up. But in their bodies, on the ground, they'll see that. They'll see him coming with, with, uh, with, uh, um, with the uh, saints of God. Uh, put Jude uh, 1, 14 and 15 on the board. And there's a lot that I can say about all that, but I want to bring up some things for you tonight. Uh, <clears throat> It was these people. Now, when you read Jude, you find out that he's talking about a lot of wicked people that refuse to obey God. They don't care about God. They keep God out of their life. The biggest sin that we can do is keep, is keep God out of our life. That's the biggest sin. That's, that's the one that uh, the curtains fall. It was these people, moreover, now Jude is, is speaking here, that Enoch... In the seventh generation from Adam prophesied when he said, Behold, the Lord cometh with his martyrs of holy ones, 10,000 of his saints. All right. So here we see a picture. Now, this is the second coming. So he's coming down, and he's coming down with all these saints. And you go over to the book of Revelation, chapter 19, and we see we're on white horses. Back in the saddle again. Susan says, I don't want to ride no horse. I say, well, maybe the Lord will give you a tank or an airplane or something. I don't know. <clears throat> All right, now turn to the next. Now turn to the next verse. It's very important. Next verse. To execute. Now remember, he's coming back. And who's he coming back with? Nail it down. Everybody say us. us. Okay, at some point we had to get up there to come back. Okay. We're not going up when he's coming down. You got to see that. We already got up here. Okay, that's very important to see. So what is he coming back for now with the saints? Hmm? 
to execute judgment upon all and to convict all the impious, unholy ones of all their ungodly deeds which they have committed in such an ungodly way and of all the severe, abusive, jarring things which ungodly sinners have spoken against him. So he's coming back to judge him. Very simple. And he's coming back with us. How many of you know we'll judge angels? It says that in Corinthians. We, that's you. We will be in our resurrected body. <coughs> so I want you to see that. Now, the thing that I want you to keep in mind tonight when people say, well, the Bible was just written by man. Right. That's right. Under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. They wrote as they moved upon the, 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 the apostles and the prophets, they wrote as the Holy Spirit moved upon them and inspired them, and, 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 and they, they wrote. Uh, the pen only writes what the writer chooses. I didn't move some of you. The pen only puts down on the paper what the person's holding the pen desires. So the, 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 the ones that wrote the Bible just like a pen, and it just wrote what you, you, the writer wanted to write. You got that? Okay, that's important to see. That's all very simple. Very, it wasn't complicated. But, well, a uh, man just wrote the Bible. Boy, folks, man is smart, but he ain't that smart. He don't know the future. How can he prophesy the future? How could he prophesy that Jesus was to be born in Bethlehem? And, and we stop and think. Now we have to say to, to, to the God, well, was he born in Bethlehem? Yeah, it's all, it's all been recorded, you see. Uh, did he die on the cross? Well, he died on a pole. You know, the Jehovah Witness said, no, he doesn't die on the cross. He died on a pole. That's right. A tree, the tree. That's what they say, the tree. He died on a tree. Well, the cross is made out of a tree. <laughs> you know, it's just how you, 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 you know, you want. They'll argue about anything. But anyway, all right, we're going to go into Ezekiel. Here we go. We're going to get launched here. Ezekiel 37, verse 1. All right. Let's go with it. Now, God is talking to Ezekiel. Someone says, the, the hand of the Lord is upon me. Sometimes that's good. <laughs> Sometimes that's bad, but it ends up good. I've had the hand of the Lord upon me. You ever had the hand of the Lord upon you? <laughs> okay, some of you might not understand that. All right, the hand of the Lord was upon me. Now, this is Ezekiel talking. And he brought me out in the spirit of the Lord and set me down in the midst of the valley. And it was full of bones. And you read that. Now, many times when you read prophecy in the Bible, if you just keep reading, you go on, the Holy Spirit will start interpreting it in the Bible. Okay, and we, you'll see that here. Uh, God will begin to explain what's going on here. So, you, here you are, you just open the Bible, and you read about these bones. What in the world are these bones? When I see those bones, I think the hip bone connected to the foot bone, the foot bone connected to Everybody's ever heard that song? Some of you have been around a long time. All right. And he caused me to pass around and about them, and behold, they were very many human bones in the open valley or plain, and behold, they were very Dry. Now, how many of you know that in 70 A.D., Titus was a general in the Roman army, came in with his men and killed a lot of the Jews, I think a million of them, burnt the city, tore the walls down, and scattered the Jews to every nation, Okay. And if you study, you find there's Jews in every nation. All right? So that was God's punishment upon them. Now, that was 70 A.D. So you read in Scripture that one day God's going to bring them back 
And you say, no way, Jose. Can't be. All right, let's read on now. And he said to me, Son of man, can these bones live? And I answered, O oh Lord God, you know. Ezekiel, you had some good sins. The Lord knew. Now, notice the Lord's asking questions. Can these bones live? This is an impossible situation. Dry bones in the valley. Again, he said to me, prophesy to these bones and say to them. Now, this is why it's important when you begin to read the scriptures and you see it's important for us to say. Everybody, say. Say. Paul says in Corinthians, we're like David. We have the same faith that David is. I speak what I believe. Okay? Learn to believe what is right, then speak what is right, even though you don't see it. Even though, it, because God counts those things that be not as though they is. So that's what you're doing. You, we ha it's so important that we speak. We speak. We speak. Speak good things. Bless people. Bless people. And you get blessed. You get blessed. Speak the word of God. Speak what you believe. Not what you feel. What you believe. It's very important. And that's all through the scriptures. All right. But notice, notice what God. God has to have somebody on the earth to speak. And I'm not going to all this thing that, that, that Adam uh, uh, became the God of this world, or we know Satan did, and, and, and uh, man lost his authority, but Christ comes back and he gets it all back for us, and I up to us to pick it up and speak what he says now. The greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. You know, if you're going around thinking, poor me, this, poor me, that, no, speak what God says who you are in Christ. You've got to learn to speak. God needs people on the earth to speak, speak his will, speak his word for your own family. Speak. Okay, very important. Again, he said to me, prophesy to these bones and say to them, oh, you dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Now, you know, let's get down to the human level here just a little bit. How many of you think probably Ezekiel's looking around and says, I hope no. <laughs> I hope nobody's around here seeing me speak to these bones. <laughs> That's my imagination. Anybody can see that? Huh? What's Miss Shirley doing over there? I saw her in the yard over the other day. She's speaking to some type of bones. <laughs> oh, my goodness. <laughs> oh, Oh, you dry bones, you hear the word of God that I'm speaking. See, God uses man to bring about miracles. Well, Lord, what do you want me to speak? Say, thus saith the Lord God to these bones. Behold, I will cause breath and spirit to enter you, and you shall live. And he goes on and says, I will lay... Uh, sinews upon you and bring up flesh upon you and cover you with the skin. Now, let's move on. And I could, I wish we had the time to bring, to talk about every word there, but I think you get the gist of it. I want to move over to, uh, excuse me. Uh, so I'm going to go to verse 10. Put verse 10 up there and moving quickly. Now, remember, Ezekiel is speaking to the bones, he's obeying God. So he says, so I prophesied as he commanded me, and the breath and spirit came into the bones, and they lived and stood up upon their feet, an exceedingly great host. Okay? So all these dead bones in the valley. Now, how many of you know, you know those are Jews, the nation of Israel. God is raising up a nation that died. Now he's resurrecting it. Well, we see the resurrected power of God in, in this, all of this also, too. One day, our, these bones that are right here in the grave will 
rise. Then he said to me, Son of man, that's verse 11, these bones are the whole house of Israel. Behold, they say, our bones are dried up and our hope is lost. We are completely cut off. Now, that was their thinking. <clears throat> now, we've got to make sure we understand and identify these bones. These bones that, that Ezekiel is prophesying are the whole house of Israel. So here they are scattered through all the nations of the world. And yet they are still speaking their, their, their Hebrew language. They're still with their same old customs. They haven't lost it. We're talking about nearly 2,000 years. These dry bones have been in the valley. Now in the valley are the nations of the world. You can, but we don't have time to identify every little thing. But I want you to see the picture here. Now, what I want to do is I want us to go back to 1945. Are you all ready? All right. Here we are back in 1945. Now, when did these bones come alive? When did, these, when did all the, the, the house of Israel, the nation of Israel come into being? In 1948. All right, 1948. Now, we're in 1945 here. And we're reading this. We're reading this. And, and Israel's not in the land. These bones are not come alive. All the Jews are still in all the nations. And here we see, can a nation be born in one day? I mean, you know, that's been prophesied. That's in the Bible. Yes. In one day. And I was alive in 1948. When they voted for Israel to become a nation again, and they could come back and get their land. That was God moving. See, <coughs> if you're not careful, you'll see all kinds of things, but you don't realize that God is behind a lot of things, moving things into position and, and doing things. When somebody comes up and accepts, accepts Christ, a lot of people don't realize that God has dealt with, is dealing with that man as, as it's caused that man to be born again. A spiritual transaction is taking place right before their eyes, and they're looking and they don't understand it. But we that have been born again and, and walking in the Spirit understand that's God that moved in the heart of a man and brought him forward. He says, I want to receive Christ as my personal Savior and be born again, become a child of God. And that's, that's supernatural. That's spiritual. Happening right here. To, right here. When you... When you Share Christ with somebody and lead them to Christ. Supernatural power of the Holy Spirit is operating right there. Notice this. And causing that man to be born again. And that man or woman has become a new creation in Christ right here in front of our eyes. And not many people see it. That's why they can't rejoice. So... You see people move, and they're either being moved by the enemy or they're being moved by their own uh, initiative or they're being moved by God. Okay? So here's what we got. I want to read verse 11 again. Here we go. Then he said to me, and that's God speaking to, to, to Ezekiel, Son of man, these bones are the whole house of Israel. In our day, in our generation, we have seen this prophecy come about and the Jews coming out of all of the different, and they're still doing that. There's many prophecies are long going. It's not just one second, one minute, one day, one month. It might take years for certain prophecy to come into its fullness. You understand what I'm saying? Very important. So, so Jews are still going back to Israel, just like, just like the prophet said. Okay, but see the world and people read that that they don't understand that this is God fulfilling what he told Ezekiel in 1948. And then they came into their land and boy, if you, we saw the movie about how, I mean, they had to fight all the different nations that were trying to uh, keep them from becoming a nation. And all these different years now they've been fighting and they become stronger and stronger and stronger. 
that land over there was, was desolate. Nobody wanted it. The, the Turks had it for 400 years, and they didn't do nothing with it. They had control over it. And then England, England got in there and, and got it and was able to be used by God to, uh, to bring uh, Israel into being. But that was God working through a nation of, of, uh, of England and to bring all that about. So we have to see that this is just not an ordinary book. This is a supernatural book. And as you study these scriptures and as you study these prophecies and you really see in the spirit how God is working and moving, your faith becomes so strong, so powerful. And then you say, man, all those prophecies that God spoke about Israel has come about. I ain't doubting anything in the future. How many understand what I'm saying? How many can hear me? Okay. That's right. I want you to hear me now. Now, let's move on a little bit here now. Okay. <clears throat> In verse 12, we'll start 12. I'll start reading real quick. The time element goes by fast. Therefore, prophesy and say to them, Thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I will open your graves. Well, these, these nations that they, uh, they lived in, it was like graves. They were so mistreated. How many of you know that Hitler, how many, uh, six million Jews, why, why, why? That, that's the devil. See, the devil did not want Israel to become a nation because he wants, he wants to discredit the word of God. See, we have to see that the, that, that the enemy is working all the time in the atmosphere when, 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 I, when people talk to me, i got to discern. Are they listening to the devil or are they listening to God? You, you discern those things. How many have come to that point where you can discern that? Let me see your hands. Yeah, you can. You can. And, you, and you say, why, why, why do I feel this way about that brother or that sister? See, But your spirit, see, is talking to you. The spirit of God lives in you. You're able to discern whether that spirit is of God or that spirit of, is of the enemy. First John, you'll read that. It's try the spirits. Say, try the spirits. Talking about human spirits there, really. Find out, if they, are they from God or are they from, is, is that the enemy? See, so all of that we have, we, we have learned. And I think most of our people are very sensitive to the spirit of God. All right, look at this now. All right. Okay, I'm going to read 12. Therefore, prophesy and say to them, Thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I will open your graves and cause you to come up out of your graves. I want you to see something. It's God working, operating, and doing all of this. We see the natural, but it's God behind all that, bringing them all back to the land. It's God working in our day, making these bones come out of those, out of those, those nations. Raising them up and bringing them back home. It's, that's God in operation. Oh, I wish I could see God. Man, open your eyes. <laughs> Somebody say hello to me out there. Yeah, okay, some of you sort of, uh, <clears throat> I just want to know you're still there, boy. <clears throat> Look what it says. Oh, my people, and I will bring you back home to the land of Israel. Whew. Here are these people scattered all over the world. Now, it is God that's bringing them back to the land. It is God. The reason you're here tonight, let me tell you something. It's God. Ain't your mammy? Ain't your daddy? Ain't Uncle Sam? God. The reason you're seated right here tonight. The reason you're going to be able to go to heaven when, when this old body quits functioning God birthed you into the kingdom of God. See, we've got to open our hearts and our minds and knock off this here carnality and realize God loves, worked in all of y'all. He chose you before the foundation of the world to be his children. I'll take that one. I'll take that one, that one, that one, that one. That one. See, the reality, when the revelation of that comes in, is it's like, oh, <gasps> 
You're so good to me. One amen. Oh, thank you, thank you. Thank you, son. Appreciate that. Appreciate it. Thank you. I must be getting through to somebody. Uh, excuse me, I'm just a fanatic in all this, you know. Okay, uh, yeah. Okay, now here we go. Verse, uh, what, was that, what was that next? Verse 13. Here we go. And you shall know that I am the Lord, your sovereign ruler, when I have opened your graves and called you to come up out of your graves, O my people. Now, I want to say something. Now, this is what I want to come to. When you read Scripture, is that Scripture really been open to the Jews yet? And you shall know that I'm, they don't know that yet. Are you listening? So that's what I want you to see, that when you read scriptures, you, that's past, that's fulfilled, that's fulfilled, that's not fulfilled yet. I mean, you understand what I'm saying? When you read scriptures and prophecy, you must understand that the prophet just spits it out like that, but you've got a time factor. Now, how many of you know one day they're going to see him whom they have pierced at some point. Now, some of the Jews are being converted today to Christ, okay? But the nation as a whole is still not a Christian nation. They still do not believe in Jesus Christ, okay? So what I'm saying and what I want you to understand is when you read Scripture, certain ones say, hey, that's past, that's past, this hadn't passed yet. You go and you read Acts uh, 2 about in Pentecost when the, when the Holy Spirit is being, pour, uh, being poured out. And Peter said, and the moon shall, and, and, the, and, the, and the moon shall turn uh, blood red and, and, all, and this, all this other stuff is going to happen. That ain't happened yet. How many understand what's fine? Uh, turn real quick now. I want you to get this point because when you read scriptures, you're going to find out that this has come true. This has come true. This ain't come true yet. That's still future times. Okay, uh, let's turn to Acts, uh, Acts 2 real quick, like time element, oh brother, okay, here we go. Just, I, w I want you to, to see this, because when you read prophecy, <coughs> you need to understand this, <coughs> excuse me. Now, uh, Peter is saying that Joel prophesied this. Okay, I'm going to start with um, I'm going to start with verse 17, Acts 2:17. Okay, we'll start with 16. Put 16. I'm sorry, Acts 2:16. I'm sorry, uh, Willie. Okay, here we go. But instead, this is the beginning of what was spoken through the prophet Joel. Now, on the day of Pentecost, that was all prophesied. And it was coming to pass, but I'm going to show you something. And it shall come to pass in the last days. Now notice, that's 2,000 years ago. 2,000 years ago is the last days. If they were in the last days, we must be in the twilight, the dark, evening last days. How many of you want you to see that? See that? Say, we've been in the last day. You read Hebrews. So about in the last days, he's chosen to speak to us by his son. Okay, so we've been in the last days. Forget about time and God's mentality. A day is a thousand years, a thousand years, you know, we, we know all of that. Okay, now look what it says. That I will pour out my spirit upon all mankind, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, telling forth the divine, so forth, and everything. Look at verse 18. Yes, and on my... Uh, ma uh, ma men servants and also on my maiden servants in those days i will pour out my spirit now he's talking about the day that he lived in okay now we're in the last days all right and he goes on and says uh, and they shall prophesy telling the divine counsel and predicting future events pertaining especially to god's kingdom and notice this, and I will show wonders in the sky above and signs on the earth beneath blood and fire and smoking vapor. Has that happened yet? No, that didn't happen then. So what have you got? 
you go over and you read further on about the last days and you'll find that that'll come about in the last of the last days. So you may have one scripture talking about being fulfilled right then and there. The next thing about the, uh, what he just mentioned there about the vapor and all of that and so forth. And the sun shall turn to, into darkness and the moon into blood before the obvious day of the Lord's coming. So we know that that goes all the way 2,000 years past Pentecost that those will come to pass. How many do I have confused? Everybody got it? So when you read scriptures, it's so important to understand what has come to pass, and it may be 2,000 years later before this other verse comes to pass. Okay, that's why I brought that up. And then he goes on, in, of course, uh, well, I want to finish 20. And the sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before the obvious day of the Lord comes, that great and notable and suspicious and renounced day. And it shall be that whoever shall call upon the name of the Lord, invoking, adoring, and worshiping the Lord Christ shall be saved. So that's a quickie, real quick. The last days, all that's going to happen. And that's future tense. Okay? So to give you an idea, when you read the scriptures, you've got to keep that in mind. Let's go back to Ezekiel now. And there's other, many other scriptures I could point out, but the time element, but I want you to get a few things here tonight anyway. Ezekiel, where are you at? Uh, there's Daniel. There we go, right there. Okay. Now, Verse 14, let's go, 14, Ezekiel 37, 14. Boy, there's so much in here that I'd love to go over 38 to talk about the, the uh, Gog and Magog war, Russia. I mean, we see everything over there in place right now. Russia's acting up, all that. Man, we got another war coming here pretty soon, and God is going to take care of them. Wow. And the whole world is going to know that it was God. All right, here we go. 14, and, you, and I shall put my spirit in you, and you shall live, and I shall place you in your own land. Notice God will do that. Then you shall know and understand and realize that I am the Lord, have spoken and it and, it, and performed it, saith the Lord. So all that's the Lord's work, bringing Israel back to the land. Now, son of man, take a stick and write on it for Judah and the children of Israel, his companions, then take another stick and write upon it for Joseph, the stick of, of Ephraim, and all the house of Israel, his companion. Now, how many of you know when uh, King Solomon died, then Israel split to northern kingdom and southern kingdom, became two nations? Here, how many of you know there's not two nations over there now? One nation, the nation of Israel. Okay, and that's what he's saying right here. Look what it says. And join them together into one stick, that they may become one in your hand. And when your people say to you, will you not show us what you mean by these? Say to them, thus saith the Lord God, behold, I will take the stick of Joseph, which is in the hand of Ephraim, and the tribe of Israel, his associates, and will join with it the stick of Judah, and make them one stick, and they shall be one in my hand. When the sticks on which you write shall be in your hand before their eyes, then say to them, Thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I will take the children of Israel from among the nations, look at that now, God will do it, to which they have gone, and will gather them from every side and bring them into their own land. Now we've seen that in our generation, in my generation anyway. Some of you just born yesterday, but... I was born way years ago, back in the 30s. <clears throat> now, you know, some people say, well, it was all written by man. Well, they were right. But if they understand and they study this thing here and see what God has done and, is, and the nation is over there, and they will become a vast army, and it goes on and talks about Israel, and the, and the land will be actually be cultivated and grow food, and for centuries it sits there like a desert. 
And all that's prophesied in the Bible. And we see all of that today as we study Ezekiel 38 and 39 and Zechariah. It's also good. Okay, let me finish this up. The time is just about gone. Okay, and I will make them one nation. Okay, they're not two now. They're one. God did that. In the land, upon the mountains of Israel. Now notice this. And one king shall be king over them all. And they shall be no longer two nations. Well, we see that. They're not two nations. They're one. Neither be divided into two kingdoms anymore. Okay. When did they come to two kingdoms? Well, remember when Solomon passed away, then they divided. Okay. Ten nations. Two, two uh, tribes and then ten tribes for the other nation. Okay. So we see all of that changing and we see it change today. They're one nation now. Okay. <clears throat> They shall not, be, not defile themselves anymore with their idols and their detestable things or with any of their transgressions, but I will save them out of all their dwelling places, that's all these nations, and from all their backsliding in which they have sinned, and I will cleanse them, so shall they be my people, and I will be their God. Now, I mean, you know, that has to come about yet, and it's coming by, coming by slowly, a little bit, by a little bit, some of the Jews are realizing that they are. Now, look at verse 24. Now, this is a good one. And David, my servant, shall be king over them. And they all shall have one shepherd. They shall also walk in my ordinances and heed my statutes and do them. Now, has that verse come about? Is that come about yet? No. Now, how can David... Be king over them. He did. Isn't that right? He did. Isn't that right there, son? <laughs> Don't bother a man when he's sleeping. <laughs> so you see that that scripture is yet to be fulfilled. I mean, you see that? And David, my servant, shall be king over them. That's powerful. Now, we don't see that yet. So that means then after the resurrection, and David is resurrected in his glorified body, and then he will go to uh, Jerusalem and be king in a resurrected body. And they shall dwell in the land in which your fathers dwelt, that I gave to my servant Jacob. And they shall dwell there, and they and their children, and their children's children forever. And my servant David shall be their prince forever. Now, when you see all of this happening in the world, how the UN and the nations are turning against Israel, how many of you know there's a spiritual power behind all of that? The prince of the air. Anybody ever met him? Satan. Say, so you have to see what's going on in the world that it's not just all natural, but there's spiritual war going on in heaven. That's why we pray for the a nation of Israel. That's why we pray for, for what God has prophesied in his word, to know his word and prophesy and pray. And... Uh, because the devil wants to discredit the word of God. And if he can destroy Israel, the prophecies will be, wouldn't be fulfilled. But he's not fighting, really. I mean, the enemy uh, thinks he can win, but he's already lost. As I read the Bible all the way through. And I'm going to tell you a secret. He's going to end up somewhere that is hot. No air conditioning at all. Throughout eternity, with all his followers. Aren't you glad you know the Lord tonight? Don't, don't ever be 
dis discouraged that you have to come to church. Just thank God you can come because this is just a short time down here. But see what's going on in the world today. And you get into the Scripture. And, and I'd like to, if we had time to study more and read more of this, because it's really something to see how Israel is becoming stronger and stronger and stronger. Let's pray. Father, I thank you that whatever was brought forth tonight, that it might do uh, something good to your people, that they might realize that we are dealing with a living God, that reality is what he has spoken. And we thank you that we have a part in bringing about his will because we are preaching the gospel. Jesus said this gospel will be preached into the whole world and then the end. And we have a part in that, every one of us. And we thank you for that, Lord, that we are doing your will. Lord, we thank you now as we leave and go to our homes that you'll give us wisdom in all this situation that's happening about this storm. And we want to thank you now for this beautiful night that we've been able to spend time together and hear the word of God. In Jesus' name, I pray. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. Okay.